Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss how will we interpret the data that has been pre presented in the form of quarter 2 GDP. We will also differentiate between GDP and gross value added and we will try to look at the data understanding what is the health of our dear Indian economy. Now we know that America is entering into recession and it is being said by certain analysts that India will escape this global recession that I have already discussed but today we are going to discuss India specific details so stay with me and look at these particular points from the perspective of prelims as well as from the perspective of GS means paper third moving ahead what is the news India GDP quarter 2 the second quarter's growth highlights are said India's Q2 GDP growth has slowed down but to 6.3%. Economy is on the track to achieve 6.8 to 7% growth in the current fiscal. This has been said by the chief economic advisor. This data which has been presented by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation came into existence as an independent ministry on 15th of October 1999 when there was a merger of Department of Statistics and the Department of Program Implementation. Currently it has two wings. First is the statistics and the other one is program implementation. When we talk about this, the statistics wing is known as the National Statistical Office and the Central Statistical Office. Uh, this is the first you can say division. The second one is the Central Statistic Office, Statistical Office, the Computer Center and the National Sample Survey Office. All these names you must have heard. The program implementation has three divisions, namely 20 point program, infrastructure monitoring and project monitoring and the member of parliament local area development scheme. So remember all this, these are prelims fact. If we talk about other segments of MOSP, there is also one segment, National Statistical Commission, which is created through a resolution of the Government of India, and Indian Statistical Institution, which is declared as an institute of national importance by the Parliament. Moving ahead, now let's talk about how does the Ministry collect the data. This is very important for your prelims examination, understand this. It collects data through administrative sources, the surveys which are conducted by the state and the union government. It also collects the data by non-official sources and studies as well. So a prelims question could be formed here that it collects data only from the official sources. No. It collects data through scientific sampling methods and compiles the data based on the current data. Then presents you uh, with, uh, with respect to the current one, it presents you the proper data through which we can interpret what is the status of the economy. After applying standard statistical techniques and extensive scrutiny as well as supervision. Of course that is understood. Now if we talk about GDP, GDP is gross domestic product. What is it? It is the total monetary or the market value of all the goods as well as the services which are produced within a country's borders. So it does not matter if a foreign entity is producing the good or the services but if it is doing so within the geographical boundaries of India then it will be counted in GDP and how do we calculate GDP? We calculate it through three ways. First is the expenditure, second is the production and third is the income and it can be adjusted for inflation and population to produ produce deeper insights. Also Real GDP takes into account the effects of inflation while if we talk about the nominal GDP, it does not. So these all are preliminary facts plus conceptual. Now if we talk about India, India calculates its GDP by two different methods. One is based on the economic activity that is the factor cost and the second is what is the expenditure level, this is the market price. Okay. So the factor cost method, it assesses performance of eight different industries and the expenditure based method, it indicates how different areas of the economy are performing, what uh, sector wise performance is there and these include trade, investment and personal consumption. Moving ahead, 
Now, if we talk about the importance of MOSP, the Central Statistical Office, Statistics Office, it coordinates with various federal government, that is state governments, union government and different agencies in order to collect the data. Data points specific to manufacturing, crop, yields or commodities, these are collected with the help of the price monitoring cell in the Department of Consumer Affairs, which is under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, of course. And production related data used for calculating the IPI is sourced from the Industrial Statistics Unit of the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, which is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. All right. Moving ahead now, if we talk about the other calculations, nominal GDP, which is, of course, the current market prices, and real GDP, which is inflation adjusted, is also there. But the most talked about is the factor cost one. So GDP at factor cost include these many industries. Don't look at the data. I'm just giving you sectors. So what is the income level of with respect to factor cost? Um, agriculture, forestry and fishing, mining and quarrying, manufacturing, electricity, gas and water supply, construction, trade, hotel, transport and communication. The data, the current data of the Q2 will be provided in the later phases. Financing, insurance, real estate and business services, community, social and personal services. This is the factor cost. If we talk about the expenditure method, which is at the market price, it involves the coming up of the domestic expenditure. If the domestic expenditure is going good, that means the consumption levels are also increasing and investment will get a boost. So, domestic expenditure on final goods and services across various streams. Here it includes the expenditure method. Private final consumption expenditure, government final consumption expenditure, gross fixed capital formation, what is the level of capital formation, what are the changes in stocks, valuables, export imports and any discrepancy. Okay. Moving ahead, now let's talk about the different engines of growth that India seeks to achieve. First is of course, all the money Indians spent for their private consumption. This is through expenditure method which we call here as private final consumption expenditure. Next is all the money that government spent on current consumption such as salaries. This is the second point. Uh, the second point this one government final consumption expenditure. So this is the expenditure method we are talking about. Then comes all the money spent towards investment to boost the productive capacity of the economy. Now this includes business firms which are investing in factories or the government buildings and roads and bridges. This is the gross fixed capital formation all right and then we have what more the net effect of exports and imports these are the engines of growth and as i told you expenditure method this is exports less imports this gives us net export and import moving ahead now let's talk about what is gross value added and how it is different from gdp this is a this is of course an economic productivity metric and it measures the contribution of a corporate subsidiary, company or municipality to an economy, producer, sector or region and the output of the country less the intermediate consumption, it takes into account that. So, if we take the total output and we minus the intermediate consumption, we get our GVA. GVA is important because it is used to adjust the GDP so that double counting is not there and it is used to measure how much money a product or service has contributed in towards meeting companies fixed cost. Moving ahead now if we have to talk about how they are related when one is interpreting the uh, quarterly data GVA data is important because it is this which is the observed data how much value has been added throughout the period of time. GDP is derived by looking at GV only so we have a formula GDP is equals to gross value added plus the taxes which have been earned by the government and minus the subsidies which have been provided by the government. Now again, if the taxes which have been earned by the government is more than the subsidies that have been provided, GDP will be higher than GVA. Okay? And this is what typically happens. For example, for the second quarter too, the GDP is at rupees 38,16,578 crore. It is much higher than GVA which is just rupees 35,000 sorry 35 lakh 5,599 crore. So how is it higher because taxes are 
the government is earning much taxes than the subsidies it is giving away. Now let's talk about the GVA data. What is it showing us? It has shown that there is a contraction in the manufacturing sector which is not a very good news. In the quarter 2, manufacturing gross value added is declining. It has declined at 4.3%. That means manufacturing sector is not adding much value to the economy. Contraction has meant that it has grown by just 6.3% over the 3 years since the COVID pandemic. So this is a point of concern because we cannot now blame COVID pandemic with respect to entirely on the COVID pandemic with respect to the declining contribution of the manufacturing sector. It grew just by 10.6% between fiscal year 17 and fiscal year 20. So as you can see even before the COVID pandemic fully you know rooted out entire routed out the entire structure of the economy manufacturing sector wasn't doing well. The problem is that employment gets reduced because manufacturing sector absorbs the labor when they are not finding it well enough in the agricultural sector and other sectors. So if manufacturing sector cannot keep up then of course unemployment will rise. Between fiscal year 14 and 17 the GVA grew by 31.3 percent and the data from Center for Monitoring Indian Economy shows that jobs in the manufacturing sector also halved by um, in, in between to four years 2016 to 2020. Then comes the second one. Now there is a growth in the services sector by almost 15% in the current ongoing fiscal years quarter 2. We are comparing it to the pre-COVID level. Okay. So quarter 2 of 2020 and 21. If we compare it to the quarter 2 of fiscal year 2022-23, there is an improvement. The growth is barely over although 2%. The sector grew over by 26% between fiscal year 17 and 20. The service sector is still looking healthy. Mining and quarrying is another sector which employs a lot many person. It has contracted by almost 3%. It has contracted by 3.5% if we compare it or if we take the data of 3 years from fiscal year 17 to 20 and it has grown just by 2.5% since then. This is the GVA. Now if we talk about the positive news, positive news is coming from agricultural sector along with forestry and fishing. It has done better than is expected, grew at 4.6% and overall we have to remember the GVA has grown by 5.6% on an year to year basis. That means if we compare the current year and the last year and the growth is just 7.6% when we compare it to the pre-COVID level. So of course COVID has taken a toll. Now if we talk about GDP, let's talk about private consumption expenditure. This is the most important component when we calculate GDP through expenditure method. It comprises of over 55% of the India's total GDP. Expenditure to work because if private consumption expenditure is not doing healthy, then investment will also get impacted. If consumers do not want to consume, why would companies want to invest? Simple as that. So expenditure towards investment are the second biggest component of this. Around 33% of the total is comprised of this. So of course, if you get affected so will the second point. Private consumption has grown by a healthy 9.7% over the past year and although it is just 11% when compared over the last three years and between fiscal year 14 to 17 the consumption private consumption expenditure grew by almost 28%. The investment expenditure have also grown by 10.4% over fiscal year 21. 21% between fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 2022-23. Now we talk about contraction in the government expenditure. Contraction is not very healthy in the government expend, uh, expenditure because when final consumption, uh, private final consumption gets back, it contracts, then government expenditure can boost the economy. It can pick, out the, pick up the economy from any sort of abyss. So contraction in government final consumption expenditure has been recorded. Now it accounts in the GDP calculation just about 10 to 11%. The data has shown that not only did the government expenditure, uh, consumption expenditure contracted by 4.4% in quarter 2, to quarter, if you compare it to the quarter 2 of uh, 2021, it, has it is almost 20% below the pre-COVID level. So government is not doing a lot of expenditure. Also, we have to ensure that we know about net exports data as well. India imports a lot more than it exports. So of course, the NX value is negative. 
in the quarter second the negative value swelled by 89% this is of course due to the first of all supply chain distortion due to the pandemic uh, and the second one of course through the war moving ahead over the past 3 years this drag on gdp has also increased in size by almost 157% that's a lot moving forward we can just understand by interpreting the gdp and gva data we can of course know the health of the economy gdp and gva data provides such insights to the policy makers that it is indispensable in nature so i will give you a question for prelims in the comment segment you can answer it through that thank you so much for watching and stay updated